How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Bushidic. Welcome back to Muv Love Photon Melodies and we're in adoration once again. It's pretty fun. So we keep making uh meeting lots of fun characters. Every episode so far it's been just a big smile, which is really funny considering like the timeline we're in, but it's been really fun. And a lot of you have been responding very positively. A lot of you have been looking forward to this very specifically, so I'm very happy to be delivering to it. Uh, and apparently there are multiple routes in this one. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I've got some ideas of kind of like what I'm leaning so far, but I don't know any of these characters at all, really. Um, so we're gonna have to just see how it goes. I hope you enjoy joining me as I slaughter the German language. You know, every, like every language, including English, I just cannot stop myself. I have to destroy it in some way or another. It's just, maybe, maybe that's it. I'm just doing like a slow, deliberate character assassination of language. Eventually, someday, we're all gonna be brought, brought down to my level, the lowest common denominator, and we'll somehow, like, devolve into a like, fractured society and world of buying, like, tribal mechanics of people who can barely talk and just grunt at each other. But we'll get to that later. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm in an odd mood today, if you can't tell, but that's perfectly fine. I'm just excited to be joining uh, doing this with you. So please, sit down, hope you enjoy, sit back, relax, and let's see what other adventures we can get into with this insanity. And frankly, I, I'm curious if we're even going to see any actual, like, challenge or combat like there's gonna they, they talk about like a like a, a training exercise maybe that's all it'll be is a training exercise and we'll be right back to the just the crazy drama because remember this this video this whole series can't be very long because it's like it's like like he's only here for like a week or two we're already like past some of the basic introduction so i want to see what happens but anyway let's get started i'm done with my report thus ends the second day of my stay yeah so second day but he's only here for a little bit hmm I forgot about that. I must thank my fourth eldest brother, uh, Kyoshiro, for teaching me how to write like a bureaucrat. I can always see the awestruck faces of my instructors as they gaze upon my work. Hehehe. <laughs> Today marks the end of my inspection in the main facility. This may be the largest base in Europe, but now that I have seen the most, the most important places, I have concluded the equipment here does not differ, differ much from the Empire's. Of course, that's only to be expected. What I was shown could be uh, accessed by even a low-level security clearance. I would be rash to conclude the technology I'd seen as a representative of the whole base. There was something rather unsatisfactory, though. This morning, I took a stroll to observe the surface pilots during their daily training. Their evident lack of dedication rendered me speechless. Instead of following a standard training regime, it seemed as if everyone was simply doing whatever they pleased. How can they expect to function as a cohesive unit during actual battle if they can't bring themselves to do so during training? Even if there are some excellent surface pilots, Major Eichberger, uh, Eichberger, I don't know, uh, Captain Ralstein came to mind. The others would inevitably end up dragging the whole unit down. Hmm. Lieutenant Brar's behavior is especially worrisome. He, is he really of noble blood? That man was letting out a torment of complaints the entire time, with his main grievance being how boring training was. Such behavior would, under no circumstances, go unpunished in the Empire. Individual freedom without bounds is an excessive is it is an excessive respect for privacy breeds spoiled behavior such as this it seems. In that regard, the empire system is miles ahead. There are great benefits to be found in fostering a com uh, comradeship with a clear hierarchical structure. Everyone knows where they stand and how they're supposed to act in order to support the whole. Cerberus's performance would improve greatly if they were to switch to a more regimented system and spend more time training in the fundamentals. Should I bring this up to uh, major? Eichberger's attention? Oh, son. Son, you're so naive. I'm not sure that you talking about that. I mean, you could bring it up, sure, but do you expect that they'll actually, like, A, listen or not have a super, like, amazing counter offer, like, when you are a cadet? I mean, come on. Still, it's quite a conundrum. This, is yet to, this has to be how they've always done things, and yet Cerberus is renowned throughout Europe, which begs the question, how can this be? Maybe it's because of the seven heroes? I can easily see how the unit's lofty reputation stems from the outstanding performance of a few selected individuals in battle. Hmm. And then there's the matter of my uh, conversation with the other officers during free time. I can't make heads or tails of the things I heard there. No, oh, I'm sure this will be great. What, does he like not clip his toenails? Yeah. 
I have to say, so Luna's voice actor, like, it's like she's constantly whispering. I don't know how you can pull that off and also be, like, loud. It's very odd. Is this what they call an open secret? I know better than to put any stock in idle gossip, but it's something, but if somewhat telling that pretty much everyone knows about this terrible thing. <laughs> Let me guess, she doesn't actually require it, right? She just thinks it looks cool. Not particularly. Figured there must have been a recent injury and that she's waiting for a transplant. Yeah. Really? She refused to get an artificial transplant? Shouldn't that be fatal to any service pilot's career? Okay. Yeah, sure. So, long time witch hunters. Yeah, that's... Is that a thing? Like, I know witch hunting was a thing, but like... They can't actually still have, like, witch hunter... Well, maybe they can. They just wouldn't talk about it. That's, that's weird uh, and uncomfortable. You mean they actively participated in witch hunts during the Middle Ages? Are you serious? そう。でもそれは要を欺く仮の姿。実は魔術の研究に全てを捧げるオカルト主義の賭けで、異端審問は他人の研究や魔導書を奪う手段だったの。that actually sounds like an interesting plotline from, like, Fate. Oh, no. <laughs> a certain... A certain dictator who happened to be German. <laughs> we all know who that was. God. So there's some truth to her words. Germany's infamous Fuhrer was committed to, committed to the occult. I could sort of understand if she were talking about Captain Ra uh, Ralste Rallerstein, but for the lieutenant to be caught up in something that morbid. <laughs> he's, uh, he's taking it all so seriously. So the curse is hereditary. <laughs> Look at her, she's so happy. She's happy because he's eating it up. <laughs> what? The devil's... What? Oh my gosh. I love it. They're such geeks. Magan's <laughs> Okabe Rintaro would fit in perfectly with Cerberus. <laughs> oh! Yes! Of your delusions! Thank you, Helgras. Oh. Yes, here we are. Oh. I apologize. So, Lieutenant uh, Waltz, uh, oh, uh, Witzelbin. Witzelbin. I have no idea, man. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, I apologize to any and all people who absolutely have a clue of what I'm supposed to be saying with these names. Oh my gosh. Uh, so, Lieutenant meant to say that somebody would have tried to pull a fast one on me sooner or later, no matter what. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so she has an actual cybernetic enhancement. So, like, likely she lost her eye and she was given one that actually, like, improves her combat capabilities. That's actually kind of cool. Huh? So she gets feedback directly from the electronic implant? Why? Unless this is another lie. That can't be right. In my opinion, members of the same unit should not keep secrets from each other. How are you supposed to develop an, an esprit de corps when, uh, when you can't even talk about matters of such pivotal importance? <sighs> I figured it's because you're the guardians of the gates of hell, which is, you know, Dover. Yes, Lieutenant Faulkner told me about it yesterday. Cerberus is the mythological beast that guards the gates of hell, in this case, the European mainland. And again, I strongly agree with this way of naming things. The Empire should also start naming its units after mythological creatures. 
Yeah, I guess they don't, do they? Or wasn't there something they called an Akuma? I don't know what though. Like, that would have made sense, but yeah, yeah. For example, Tsuchinoko Battalion. Kappa Regiment. Stevens. Ugh. No, those won't do. I can't put my finger on why exactly, but those won't do. Ooh. How so? Ah, right. Ah, you're right. That means that each company is supposed to stand on one of service's heads. Inconceivable! The way that both the legend and the organization's name match up is simply too cool for words. So there's Major uh, Major Eichberger, the Black Wolf King, the Captain Rollerstein, Raul, uh, the Sonic Baron, but who's the third? Ah. Blau. Blau means blue in German. Nice. Cerberus no uh, that's the one I should be a part of, except I would be terrible, it wouldn't be, I'd be, I'd make an awful surface pilot. Well, I like to dream. I actually love mechs in general. So, on Steam they recently released Mech Warrior 5, which I've loved the Mech Warrior games. Like, I played Mech Warrior 2 a lot when I was younger. Um, I also loved Armored Core, but I haven't been able to find a way to be able to play the Armored Core games recently. I, I, I hopefully I'll figure that out. But Regardless of all that, um, Mech Warrior 5 recently got released on Steam, uh, which is really fun because I've just played the beginnings of it, but it, you actually get to play it in first person, right, uh, driving a mech, and you can customize the mechs and have different ones. Like, I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm looking forward to playing it with some friends too, hopefully uh, in the near future, because I just love that stuff. So yeah, I love imagining myself being able to pilot a mech. I mean, who doesn't? I mean. Like, it, it might almost seem childish to some, but like, come on. Like, if you had an opportunity to drive one of these things, like, wouldn't you want a TSF? Like, wouldn't you want to, like, take it for a cruise? I don't know if I'd want to exchange a world where I could fly a TSF with one that's also got beta in it, necessitating them, but I I can't help but dream, right? <laughs> I should remember Captain Rollerstein's com uh, Crimson TSF is quite famous. It even appears in textbooks we use at the Royal Guards Training Academy. They are their own colors, huh? Baron uh, Gart von Rollerstein and his red TSF. I can't deny I was surprised he turned out to be such a unique individual, but he's an outstanding pilot. I've admired him for years. Plus, I had to commend his taste for choosing red as his TSF's color. Also, like, that his TSF looks really... Ah, oh, man, the Typhoons are pretty good. From what I've heard, only pilots with noble origins, or knights, are allowed to pick a personal color for their TSF. It's similar to the Imperial Royal Guards practice of uh, signaling a pilot's social standing through how their machine is painted, a practice used to boost the morale and discipline the surrounding troops. Soon, perhaps in a matter of weeks, I will, uh, I will first step onto the battlefield, but then I'll be piloting a red TSF representing both House Makaba and the Royal Guard. It's not a responsibility I can afford to take lightly. And I wonder, will I rise up to the occasion? Will I survive the eight minutes of death? What a silly thought. Of course I must. I'm duty bound to serve His Excellency, the Emperor, the, His Hi Her Highness, the Shogun, the Royal Guard, and the people of Japan. Unlike most of my contemporaries, I've been blessed with the opportunity to train at a company led by the bona fide hero. It would be a sin to squander such a rare opportunity. The seven heroes of legend. Can't wait to see Captain Rolstein in action. <laughs> Ooh. Why is she an exception? Because there's three companies. Is she a solo? Like, does she like? Is she actually like a like rogue uh, entity on the battlefield? Come to think of it, Lieutenant uh, Far uh, Farenhorst is one of the seven heroes of Great Britain. Yet she remains at her present rank. Shouldn't she be leading a company by now? Wow. That both sounds like awesome and intimidating. Like, I don't know if I turned down a promotion if I got it offered, but like, I could see why she would. An aristocratic officer equivalent to a samurai in terms of social standing refusing to be promoted. That's practically unheard of. Now, 
So she's like, she's effectively outside the structure. Well, I assume they must be aware the lieutenant is an ace surface pilot, but still. Wouldn't this lead to confusion in the chain of command? Okay. Oh. Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> you calm down. Oh no. The face she's making right now. I have a bad feeling. I'm getting flashbacks to what I told her about Major uh, Iceberger's pro uh, prodigious, prodigi pro prodigious consumption of potatoes. Yes, that's a very polite way to point that out, Luna. <laughs> well, this may not be my place to ask, but does Lieutenant Faulkner by any chance feel romantic affection toward the Major? From the sound of things, Major I Iceberger and the Lieutenant uh, Far and Horse are in a committed relationship. Lieutenant Faulkner has no chance of getting between them. Mm. Wow, that's some broad stroking right there, but that's perfectly fine. I'm sure it's great. Oh, gosh. The, but they're both girls. Girls can't love girls. Wrong, sir. Girls can't love girls. <laughs> oh, Sajuna, you're young and you're dumb and you're caught up in stuff. いつも物上に遠くを見つめ、言葉少なく岩尾のように佇む少佐。This could only get more tropey if it turned out they're like siblings or something. Oh gosh. I don't know if this could make a thumbnail, but I kind of want to make it one because that's. Look at this. What is this? <laughs> Ow! The woman is the unfortunate habit of hitting people whenever she gets excited. Yeah. Okay, now this looks like a cover of the game, which I love because it's like, it's a little too dark, but like, I like how they're like debating on what would make better pictures of the characters. Like, I wonder if this is like a side, like writer slash artist, like, like this is kind of like a glimpse into like the development room of the game. It's like where they're like trying to decide, like, how should we depict this scene? They're like arguing back and forth with various concepts. そして、お二人が描く戦闘軌道。まるで悪つを踊るかのように言うなで美しい。ああ。また始まったか。正十六。ルナテレジア。こうなると長いから覚悟してくれ。バックアップ。Here we go. Excited by TSS in general. I can't say I blame her. I probably, I agree. I strongly disagree. Lieutenant Waltz and Ben's interest in TSS is a credit to her profession. I th problem is, I think Sojuro is quite happy to talk about it. If anything, it only proves her pedigree. As Lieutenant Fulner said yesterday, a TSF is like the pilot's horse and armor. What exactly is wrong with being passionate about the partner you entrust your life to on the battlefield? Maybe she has an unhealthy interest in other parts of, like, a TSF. Like, I don't know. Aesthetics, maybe? I don't know. It's hard to not be caught up in the aesthetics, though. What? What is it, Lieutenant? Darn it. I've been too watchful for constant acts of aggression, to the extent where I react to every little thing she does. It's making me look like a coward. わかった。Okay. 
Ow, several hours later! Lieutenant Faulkner fled the battlefield in the nick of time. It's painfully obvious that she wanted to avoid listening to Lieutenant Waltz and, uh, uh, Wilselbin's TSF talk. That was taxing, to put it mildly. Now I can see why the use of, why, why see the use of making a tactical draw from time to time. He who turns to runs lives to fight another day indeed. Lieutenant Waltz, uh, Witzelben's monologue went on for so long, we barely had any free time left once she finally fell silent. Seemingly satisfied, she then returned to her room. Oh gosh. However, that's one more thing I like about her. I find her zeal far more relatable than Lieutenant Faulkner's fervent obsession with other people's love affairs. Now, I don't mean to imply that she's any less capable or something along those lines. There's no doubt she's a good person. But she's far removed from a knight as any common German citizen would be. Indeed, when I think of a knight, only Lieutenant uh, Witzelben and Fa uh, Falkenmeyer come to mind. And to think that she cut such a dignified figure when I first met her. Appearances certainly can be deceiving. Do I feel this crushing disappointment because we're so dis different? Only birds of a feather flock together. It seems the motto of my eighth eldest brother, uh, Kihachiro, the most popular with the ladies amongst the men of House Makabe, turned out to be correct. On the other hand, Lieutenant uh, Whittlespin... Oh God, I'm saying I'm so wrong. Witzelben. Witzelben is a woman after my own heart. This towel may be lukewarm, but how refreshing it is to wipe your hands and face with a rash of training. Don't do it. I, I don't trust that blanket at all. Those towels, there's something wrong about that. I don't like it. This commitment to hospitality goes beyond the call of duty. Such actions only serve as undeniable proof of her upright character. <laughs> I don't know. And let's not even talk about how effective she must, she must be. Lieutenant, um, efficient she must be. Lieutenant Witzelben uh, should barely have had any free time left to herself, yet that doesn't stop her from preparing another towel for me before I return to my room. Uh, Lieutenant Witzelben. No, please, let me use your beautiful first name instead of my, inside my castle. Lieutenant Luna, Luna, Sterisa, Luna Sterisa. This humble cadet would like to extend to you his, his sincere appreciation for your kind-hearted deeds. I feel like there's something really dark there, though. Oh, no. But wait. Now that I think about it, sometimes I get these odd glances from Lieutenant Luna... Uh, Luna Teresa. <gasps> Bro brother, have I just l realized something scandalous? <laughs> oh, no. Is it foolishness? Luna Teresa, no rank and I have just met. <laughs> but why would that matter? Didn't, that bo didn't my brother uh, Kihachirio also teach me that time has no bearing on love? And didn't I just prove that my brother's teachings are infallible? Then does this mean that Lieutenant Watson Ben has in love with me, perchance? Lastly, I've been wondering about this exchange program, because I know it's presumptuous of me to, to think so, but could it be this exercise has been designed specifically so I can address each and every one of my flaws? Ridiculous. There's no way this could be true, but, but what if it is? If that were the case, then I must assume responsibility as a man. I'm from, I'm a, from a Japanese samurai family. She's West German nobility. My relatives would certainly not be opposed to our union. <laughs> oh, he just... <laughs> he, he barely, it, like, understands that she might be somewhat interested in him, and he's already planning their marriage. Oh, gosh, this guy, this guy. If he weren't so competent, man. He's laying it on real thick. There's definitely some darkness there. Hmm, not bad. Not bad at all. En quatrer. It's perfect! Luna, short name already, <laughs> will most likely get Father's blessing. In that case, she would be accepted as my partner. No questions asked, even though she's a foreigner. Everything works out perfectly. Perhaps it would be a good to, idea to, let, to go pay my respects to the Wilson Ben family as soon as my training is complete. No, I shouldn't be hasty. I must remember the teachings of our soon-to-be brothers-in-law. Think things over carefully. <laughs> oh, gosh. Look at this. What is this? This is, so to speak, my... <laughs> Wait. Okay, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I didn't just skip too far ahead. Okay. Yeah, no, this is... What is this even happening? Oh, my gosh. What is this? This is, so to speak, my life's very own advanced tactical surface pilot program, and the and the uh, YF-22 could never have become the Raptor. We all know and loathe if it didn't have a powerful rival, the YF-23 Black Widow 2 to overcome. So they don't like the Raptor. 
Luna, shortened name, completely established, is now the epitome of, of feminine virtue. In which case, her rival would be... Lieutenant Falkenmeyer. Only true warriors will be accepted into the Makaba family. Oh, okay. I've heard some pretty powerful first liners, like, 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 zinger liners, but I will be as your sheath? Holy crap. Sejiro, calm yourself. <laughs> Whoa, that was intense. I mean, sheath? <laughs> I, I, at least he's on the same page. Uh, <laughs> with Helga shortened name already by my side, I can spend the rest of my life on the battlefield fighting the beta. Everything works out perfectly. Perhaps it would be a good idea to go pay my respects to the Falkenmeyer family as soon as my training is complete. No, I shouldn't be hasty. I must remember the teachings of her soon-to-be brother-in-law and think things over carefully. <laughs> Which, which should I choose? Lose worth or Helga's strength? <laughs> this game is playing with me! <laughs> it's true, because like, if, if you think about it, this is like the mindset a lot of us go into playing a visual novel. It's just like we go, it's like, alright, who am I dating? Who am I going to have a happy ending with? But, like, that's an insane way to approach, like, an actual relationship. <sighs> oh, no! No! You imbecile! You absolute imbecile! Why are you in such a frivolous mood? You're too young for love. Not to mention you've been granted a government scholarship to study a foreign land. Do not let your personal affairs interfere with your duty. <sighs> okay, calm down, sir. Yes, this isn't a curriculum designed to help me overcome my weakness. It's a trap! It's a path to self-destruction paid with my own delusions. It's time to rewrite my report, documenting this ridiculous flight of fancy and excruciating deep- No! No, 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 no! Don't do that! Don't do that! To admonish myself in no uncertain terms of the manly course of action. I must reflect upon today's events with a clear mind. Only then shall I be reborn again tomorrow. Like a phoenix rises from the cleansing flame! Why is he hopping like that? It's disturbing. Day three. <laughs> I feel like too much has happened in two days. By the way, I love this mess. It's like lovely. It's a good thing we agreed to be at the cafeteria, but with a crowd like this, I'm having a hard time finding the lieutenants. After arriving 10 minutes early might have been a mistake, but I just can't stand looking around all fidgety. People would think I'm suspicious, something I must avoid at all costs. Any misconduct on my part would also leave a black mark on the Royal Guard's reputation. <sighs> On the other hand, I would dishonor the guard even further should I fail to find them in time. Germans would come to believe Imperial soldiers have no regard for punctuality. The ultimate foxpaw. I know. I'll simply stand still and do an ocular recon of my surroundings. That way no one will notice my discomfort. Sejiro, go huh? Blast it. The lieutenant's voice is ruining my perfect posture. The right one is about to fade into the crowd. It's not my fault! It's the morning training that's to blame. The exercises were too lenient, rendering my senses dull and unprepared to deal with the sudden emergency. Sorry to keep you waiting, Lieutenant. She's very sweet. I can't make you act as my waitress. Hmm. Fine, but... Not particularly. Bear. Seriously? If I can't choose, then what was the point of asking? It makes no sense. Even if that was her way of showing concern, I just can't figure out what's going on inside that head of hers. And again, this isn't entirely unexpected. It's not uncommon for the lieutenant's words and deeds to go beyond the understanding of mere mortals. <laughs> And to think I would first believe the lieutenant was a proper lady, elegant and dignified. But now I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that she was simply putting up an act. What I'm seeing now is her real self. Nevertheless, I would very much like her to cut down on the public displays of affection. No matter how common they might be amongst Westerners, she's a noble woman. Her peers, Lieutenant Waltz and Ben, for example, have been much more restrained by comparison. Ah, uh, have they, though? <laughs> I forgot about that little incident. 
My weakness! The enjoyment I get from being glued to her fun bags can nearly be called my weakness. Dude, I think anybody would have a weakness to that. Sadly, this is not a flaw that can be cast away so easily. For not only are they, uh, are they perfectly shaped, but they feel just right to the touch, like water balloons, or maybe... Mochi. Lieutenant's mellow milk palmers feel like soft mochi. It's just as lethar like lethal. What is mellow milk bombers? What? Oh my gosh. What on earth was that phrase when you translated it? <laughs> it's of no importance, Lieutenant. Christ is averted. Note to self, never blurt out your wicked thoughts. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, I interrupted her. Naturally, he wouldn't last more than a day as a service pilot if he were a picky eater. It's outrageous to think military personnel would seek something other than effective, eff effective nutrients from their directions. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what's some of the evidence we've seen here? She's really willing to like give him, give him hugs. She wakes him up in the morning and helps him get dressed. She's bringing him food, and we know he's really short. Does she think he's like a child child? Like, I don't know what the age difference is supposed to be between them, but is she potentially treating him like he's like, like a kid? Like, that might explain a lot. <laughs> what, what may this be? Oh, now like, are you trolling him? Because I haggis is a pretty like gnarly thing to give to somebody who's never had it before. What the heck? So she wasn't praising me out of kindness, but because she wanted to push her share on me? Calm down, Shajiro. You can you can't just let something as trivial like this upset you. Lieutenant Faulner may have an ulterior motive, but that doesn't change the fact that the food is scarce in Europe. It would be inconsiderate for me to refuse her offer. Oh no. Thank you, Lieutenant. Then without delay. <laughs> what is this taste? The spice is so strong it feels like I just had a hole drilled through my skull. Not to mention the sticky, heavy lard is now seep starting to melt in my mouth. This abysmal sensation is utterly unbearable. It sounds so much not me. It is inconceivable. How could I even entertain the idea of giving voice to my displeasure? What kind of surface pilot would I be if I let the mood be affected by how the rations taste? No matter my utter revulsion, I can't let it show or be voice uh, by voice or gesture. I won't chew. I'll just swallow it whole. That's where all three hours of watching Kung Fu Masters in action finally pays off. You're gonna choke and die. Lieutenant Falder, what on earth? What on earth is this? Why would you make synthetic haggis? Are, are you kidding me? You mean they could synthesize a taste like this on purpose? Considering this is a repl replica, I shudder to imagine how dreadful the real thing must be. But wait, maybe that's the very reason it tastes so bad? The synthesized version is outright horrible, meaning the original must be delicious. I think she's trolling it, but I can't tell. Hope, despair is all I feel. However, I feel like it would be incredibly disrespectful to say that out loud. I better change the subject. <laughs> Lieutenant, one of the objectives of this, of this exchange is to facilitate cross-cultural understanding, and food is a part of European culture. Eating the local cuisine is the first step towards that lofty goal. It works. I can avoid the worst if I just swallow. Mission accomplished. Yeah, so she's like, she purposely got like, uh, yeah, she's trolling him. What's that supposed to be? Could it be that this... Thing doesn't just disagree my palate, but other Europeans can't stand this culinary abomination either. Oh no. This woman trying to kill me? I'm sure it's your imagination. I'm loving this so much, I'm struggling to contain my joy! Right. Excuse me? Yeah, I think she sees him as a child. That's the worst poker face I've ever seen! You don't want to eat this thing, that's because it all there is to it, isn't it? Oh, how I wish I could refuse, but alas, I cannot! I am bound by the customs of the Royal Guard, which mandate I must eat any leftovers with gratitude in my heart. 
And yet my body refuses to cooperate. My stomach strongly denies any more of this hazardous fare. Nevertheless, I must persist. Only four pieces left, counting my share. What's the lieutenant pushed onto me? It's been an honor knowing you, Seijiro. Not since, Lieutenant! I'm not forcing myself at all! Once upon a time, a British Prime Minister said that the British Empire could not have become a great power if it weren't for their soldiers, men who were able to stomach any and all food. Hearing about how awful British cuisine is has always intrigued me. I used to believe all those stories were fanciful exaggerations. Never in a million years would I have imagined its taste would be to amount to a crime against humanity. <laughs> I have yet to taste it myself, but I, I hear so often that it's pretty terrible, I, I'm inclined to agree. What a frightening place, the United Kingdom. Fear the tongue of John Bull. <laughs> Only after coming to Europe can I truly appreciate the outstanding craftsmanship of Japanese synthetic food. Absolutely not! I am greatly enjoying this first edit direction of a different culture! Ha ha ha! So? <laughs> you see, Lieutenant, my homeland is on the front lines as well. Can I help but be deeply impressed by the traditional dish that has supported the British as long as they struggle to hold back against the invading hordes? It's true. That taste might not suit the German palate. It certainly does not suit mine, but as they say, to each their own. I'm sure this haggis is irreplaceable comfort food in British cuisine. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You don't say! Then why the heck is it on my menu? <laughs> and to make matters worse, the last person I want to see has arrived. What exactly is amazing, Lieutenant Brar? <laughs> I'm wondering the same thing. He's absolutely not. So he can't stand this unholy abomination either? Heh, <laughs> how weak. Ha 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 ha! Eating well, no matter the food, is only to be expected from a surface pilot worth their salt. No! No! Lieutenant Briar, you beautiful idiot! Do you want me to make you want to meet your maker, you moron? Oh my gosh. He's gonna die. In the name of friendship, this is the way to declare war. <laughs> He's gonna have to go to the hospital. I think it's drawing it out too. And he collapsed in a coma. Thanks for the meal. I hate it. I hate it all. How? Mother, brother, I followed your advice. Forsaken would I believe otherwise, but lo, I draw, I draw breath still. Know this day your dear soldier almost crossed the river Styx. <laughs> it's giving me too much credit. A wise man once said that the lion will go out to the hunt on one rabbit. As for me, I went all out finishing the haggis. In other words, lion equals going all out equals me. Well now, since I'm in Britain, perhaps it would be fitting to call myself Sidro the Lionheart. Oh no. Oh no. Oh yes, I've considered the possibilities. The purpose of these indoor activities is for me to socialize with my superiors, namely Lieutenants Falner, uh, Falkenmeyer, and Whittlesbin. If I remember correctly, Lieutenant Faulner was in charge of a mysterious indoor game called Squash. This is the first time I've heard of it, which is fine. To, exper the, the, to experience the unknown is consistent with the spirit of this exercise. Then there's Lieutenant Falkenmeyer, who is in charge of fencing. Ooh. I very much like, the ex like to experience Western swordsmanship firsthand, seeing how their technique compares with those of Japan should prove interesting. But last but not least, the Lieutenant Waltzen Bien is in charge of swimming. Ooh. I shouldn't take this op opinion option lightly. Rumor says she crossed the Straits of Dover by swimming all 40 kilometers. That makes her a true expert. Every activity sounds interesting. Woe is me. If only I could divide my body into three. Oh, no! It's a choice! Fetch. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, no! Okay, it's really gonna come down to fencing or swimming. I like, Lieutenant Faulkner's fun, but it's fencing, swimming, fencing, swimming. 
Fencing swimming. Oh, no! Luna is kind of terrifying. She's very sweet, but I also think she's very scary. I think we're going to go with Lieutenant Falkenmeyer. Because she seems interesting. Oh, oh gosh. But she also seems like kind of boring. Like, the other two that like, seem really, really dynamic. And Falkenmeyer is like, she's very straight laced. I'm sure there's more to her, though. I mean, it's mud love. It's, it's written well. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it hurts to choose. I really am super torn between fencing and swimming. Like, holy crap. Oh. Oh, please be with me. Gotcha, gods. I need to make a good choice here. All right, well, I, I, I got it. We gotta go with fencing. I'm interested in fencing. Is but the natural choice. Facing Lieutenant Falkenmeyer in combat would be an excellent way to learn more about the spirit of chivalry. It would also be a great opportunity to learn about the natural disposition of a true knight like Lieutenant. Like the Lieutenant. This is one chance I cannot let slip through my fingers. Well, yes. What are you even suggesting? Preposterous. Truly preposterous. I have a samurai. I only, I, I only care about... Shush your face! You stop it. What? Yes, yes. It's good to hear the lieutenant would like to know more about Bushido. However, I... Excuse me, but if you must know, what I'm interested in are the differences between Japanese and Western swordsmanship. Like, she's agreeing with him, but he's very flustered because she's very dismissive. Curse this woman! Why do I continue to protest her objection? There's no need to explain myself and glorify her in insinuations. Perhaps you misunderstand what I meant, Lieutenant? What on earth do you think I was talking about? <laughs> what? If I deny that outright, it'd be less than the whole truth. Despite her speculations being fueled by indecent thoughts, she's not wrong. The prospect of being able to get closer to Lieutenant Falkenmeyer, whose spirit mirrors that of a samurai, fills me with joy. The result of our encounter, only time can tell. If historians could end up writing the event down as a rebirth of a historical covenant between Japan and Germany, I would be delighted. Oh gosh. <laughs> Shush. It's not like that. I was just complimenting contemplating the future prospects. Oh gosh. You're mistaken. My face is simply adjusting to the room temperature. The air conditioning is to blame for. Fetch, man. Fetch. You got it all wrong. It's not like that. And now, please, wait a second. I haven't finished eating. You want to eat more? How? How did things turn out like this? I signed up for fencing, but what I got instead can't even be called a sport. Are you serious? What on earth is she doing? Holy crap. Alright, we made the right choice! <laughs> no, for it appears I've traveled all the way to, from Britain to perform a tea ceremony. I guess it's fine. You could call this incident a cultural exchange. I'm indebted to Lieutenant Falkenmeyer as well. It's only fair that she's allowed to express her gratitude in her own special way. I see. Fresh cream, is it? A noble woman indeed. Even in this day and age, nobles can't afford such delicacies. It doesn't matter if their country has been lost or not. The lieutenant's kimono seems to be quite expensive, too, but it pales in comparison to a luxury like fresh cream. How did she... Oh, that's right. I've heard rumors of the members of the European establishment procuring both necessity and luxury goods through the American sponsors. I guess there must be some truth to them. I have to admit, I certainly didn't expect you to ba bake Western-style pastries, lieutenant. Right. If you say so. 
If she's baking western style pastries, strawberry shortcakes at all, I fail to understand why she's trying to hide it so desperately, though. Actually, the funny thing is she's very much like Sojuro. Oh. I interrupted, sorry. There's no need to worry. As this is a scion of a, as a scion of a samurai family, it's my utmost pleasure to introduce you to Japanese culture as a repayment for your kindness. She's not a weeb, is she? <laughs> oh no. Speaking as an imperial subject, I'm honored to hear your interest in our culture, Lieutenant. To tell you the truth, I'm just as interested in Western culture and as, as its military arts. I guess it's not too bad, as long as she's not overboard. But, like, I'm concerned now. <laughs> あれは今、いろいろと厄介事に巻き込まれるのでな。Huh. Am I a masterpiece, she says. I'm at a loss for words. Just how exactly should I respond? A corner of the briefing room looking like this is surreal, to say the least. Simply surreal. In place of a proper tatami, judo mats are spread out all over the place. Then there's also the batter of the stock pot paired with the soup ladle. And last but not least, these scrolls on the wall. <laughs> yep. Oh, boy. <laughs> I think they're supposed to be hanging scrolls. The lieutenant must have written them. But these characters clearly aren't kanji. Could they could they be uh, a kune form? No, oh, these characters must be jindai moji. Supposedly they're used in ancient Japan and that thing at the top. Is that a flower circle? As in the ones they hand out to little kids at school for a job well done? <laughs> Good lord, the empire should send a cultural attache to Europe for taste. Otherwise I dread to think about an impression they will get of Japan. But not all hope is lost. Her interest in experiencing Japanese culture is splendid. That's exactly why I should praise her efforts. For if I start to point out her pl plethora of errors, her interest in our culture will be nipped in the bud. Afternoon tea? At this point, I don't know if the lieutenant is a trailblazer of a fusion cuisine, or if she simply has no idea what real tea ceremony is like. Is there something bothering you, Lieutenant? You went quiet all of a sudden. Come again? Yes, but probably because of your lack, like, you know, like, the time and materials to do so. Uh... Don't call it out so well. She's sharp. Fooling her is not going to be an easy task. Absolutely not! I really want to see you perform the tea ceremony, Lieutenant. It's not that, it's not that I look bleak, but eager. <laughs> it's true! So It's darn true! Oh no. But of course, I thought so too. <laughs> Enduring the position. Your form is most impressive, Lieutenant. However, there's no need to overexert yourself. I'm aware Westerners aren't used to are used to chairs. Sitting with your body weight resting on top of your feet is bound to be exhausting. It's funny, I couldn't even try to do this style of sitting. Um like because like uh because of a knee injury I've had in the past. It's pretty bad. Like it actually has flare ups and I can end up locking my knee. And one of the things that can trigger it is to be exerting a lot of pressure on my like on my legs when my knee is at a very sharp angle. So if slash when I go to Japan I'm never going to be able to, like, sit in proper poses. I'm going to have to cross my legs. That's probably the best I can do. It's like, it's like, it's fine. Like, I don't think anyone will really care. But it is kind of like, 
When you have an injury that limits your ability to do very simple things, even if it's not completely debilitating, it's still very frustrating. Like just knowing I couldn't have it, I couldn't try and like replicate a traditional seating stance during a tea ceremony. That's very, it's, it, it's disheartening in a way, but it's trivial. Like it means it's very, very meaningless in a lot of ways. And if anybody understood the context, like there'd be nobody who would cri be critical of me because of that. But there's a part of me that would, that's still like, like you never like knowing that there are limits to what you can do, even if those limits are fairly minor. Yes, that was too forward. Please forgive me. Cold sweat started dripping down her forehead. I knew it. Sitting in uh, Seiza must be quite a burden on the lieutenant. Still, she's a paragon of chivalry. Just like how a samurai acts if she had a full stomach even when starving. There are moments when a knight like her needs to fake ignorance in order to protect her pride. She has decided to put on a brave front, using her pride as fuel to endure the pain. As a samurai, what else could I do but assist her? I must learn from her quiet, quiet dignity. You could have saved you. I feel like she's about to engage in battle. Excellent. Let me see the fruits of your studies. Huh? Uh. But, but what? Uh. Be at ease, Lieutenant Fal uh, Falcon Meyer. I see nothing. I hear nothing. What is she doing? <laughs> what is she doing? I don't know if I can no longer turn a blind eye. It seems her feet are past the point of feeling numb. No, they've become highly reactive to stimuli instead. I need to act right away or I'll witness Lieutenant disgracing herself. Exactly, what is she trying to prevent? I must help her without, without her noticing, like a gentleman. I shall provide my assistance in a respectful manner. Oh dear. And since we're on the topic of Japanese culture, Lieutenant Falcon Meyer, are you familiar with the teachings of Zen? <laughs> In general terms, Zen is a school of thought whose main precept is that by staring at your true self, you will eventually be able to reach enlightenment. <laughs> yes, and you do so through uh, uh, ascetic practice, fundamental to the doctrine, meditation in Zen Zen. You sit on the ground and concentrate in silence, emptying your mind. Wait, is she crying? <laughs> Lieutenant Falkenbeier's doing her best to endure, yet her eyes are wet with tears. What transcendent beauty. Uh, uh, desist! Desist at once! This is not the time to flaunt my refined aesthetic sensibility. I must put a stop to this before she debases herself. Lieutenant, my apologies, but could it be that you or feet are experiencing a sudden increase in sensitivity? <laughs> because I've seen this happen before. If your worldly desire that put you under so much duress. They are the thoughts that give birth to the suffering of both flesh and mind. <laughs> Enlightenment, the final stage of Zen, means that you have to dispel the illusion caused by your worldly desires, and that you can witness the truth in all of its splendor. Lieutenant, right now, you are struggling against those very temptations. Hmm. Indeed. That's why what has happened to your feet is nothing to be ashamed of. To the contrary, it's rare for anybody to endure the pain for so long, especially when confronting your desire head-on for the first time. Let it be known that I, Makabe Seijiro, have nothing but admiration for your chivalrous spirit. Seijiro. Yeah. However, straining yourself too much on this first bout might be the detrimental to your health. I think that you, as an expert in your unit, should learn how to cope with the situation, all for the sake of handing down the knowledge to the next generation. Yeah, and it's, it's spiritual practice. Let me know how to cure what ails you. Leave things to me. Too prideful. Precisely. That strategic long-term way of thinking is most splendid, Lieutenant. Uh-huh. I know that already. You don't need to repeat it. Now, without further ado, I'll be borrowing your feet. That's what I plan on doing, yes. Okay. Then, if you'll excuse me. 
Oh boy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> YouTube, please don't don't think too quick. It's just it's just a massage. Summon your endurance. This is the fastest way to recovery. Are you feeling it, Lieutenant? <laughs> Am I hitting the right spot? <laughs> if someone could be listening, they'd be like, What is happening? <laughs> yep, there we go. Yeah, there we go. A massager stimulates blood flow at the affected area. That's the fastest way to regain sensation when none of your extremities have gone when any of your extremities have gone numb. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. After heightened sensitivity, what comes next will uh, will feel as though you're getting sucked by a thousand needles simultaneously. Brace yourself. Oh gosh. <sighs> oh boy. <laughs> Calm down, you two. <laughs> I'm innocent. Pathetic, Sejiro. Pathetically pathetic, even though she's struggling with all her might, you're allowing yourself to be led astray by your carnal desire! <laughs> I made the right choice. I made the right choice. I'm simply treating the lieutenant to mere medical practice. Nothing more. Steady your heart. Refresh your desires. Are you man or beast, Makabe Sejiro? Oh my gosh, no! Captain! Uh, that's an enormous misunderstanding you're having there. I know I'm not guilty of anything. I have no reason I have no reason to feel shame, yet what is the sensation of dread I feel deep in my heart? <laughs> He might have overheard. <laughs> I have no idea, but I... Oh, my fears are groundless. It's a mysterious phenomenon, but the captain often reacts as if he could read my mind. It doesn't matter if his uncanny abilities stem from intuition or extrasensory perception. All I know is that he should know exactly what transpired. I can't say I like it, but at the very least, there will be no misunderstanding. He's back already? <laughs> An international incident? Huh? International incident? Oh, okay. look at her. Look at her. What do her eyes mean? What the heck, old man? You were supposed to be a telepath! Uh, what a particular... The captain's making this public at making this public at breakneck speed. No wonder he called a Sonic Baron. Stop it, you idiot! This isn't the time to remark on the appro uh, uh, appropriateness of his nickname. I have to stop Captain before my reputation lies in shambles. Oi, oi, Kozo! Helga Rose to umaku yattatte! Shut your face! Slander, vile slander! Oh no! Stop looking at me like I'm trash and say something! Seiji. <laughs> We're not helping! <laughs> That's the last thing you're supposed to say when fixing your messy clothes! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, great. That's gonna be a great note to start next time with this one, but that's where we're gonna end for today. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, that was wonderful and horrible at the same time. 
Ah, oh, this 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 game. This I love this. <laughs> it's utter madness. It's like it's like someone took like the joy, the quintessential joy that you find in extra and altered fable, took the like the highlights of those games and boiled it down to a highlight reel with different characters because so far it's been so enjoyable to see all this holy crap freaking insane with all the I, I i love it and hate it all at the same time <laughs> mostly love it though but oh my gosh youtube be nice please be kind to me this was not fair but it was lovely anyway i felt like you guys enjoyed that Whew, I'm going to have to go take a breather. But thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you so much, especially to the patrons who help make this channel all the much more possible. You guys are fantastic. They continue to support the channel and are doing so in a direct way so that I can try and like embellish and bring more quality to the channel, more enhancement, more particulars to it. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Thank you guys so much for your continued support and for the option to be able to just, you know, share this stuff that I love so much with all of you. I appreciate you every minute. I also appreciate all of you who are simply watching, frankly, like don't feel like you need to support me in Patreon. Like you get some stuff, you get some like a patron cast and some behind the scenes stuff, but frankly, just being here is far more than I deserve. So thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you, each and every second you spend with the video. Hopefully you guys are ready to continue this story next week. So thank you so much. And until next video watching me, I'll see me in next. I'll see you there.